Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today for our SAP User Experience Management webinar by NOAA. We're excited to introduce to you our presenters today. Um, we'll just go through the agenda very quickly. We'll have speaker introductions, and then we'll have an overview. We'll turn it over to Sahail, who will do, do a, a presentation from Tech Data, and we'll do a product demonstration, and then Q&A. Now, introductions for our speakers today. Sarah White is Director of Market Development for SAP North America Education. Sarah tirelessly supports NOAA and helps us bring software and solutions to our collective customers. Sahail Bola is an experienced IT professional with a passion for learning and mastering new technologies, and we appreciate him sharing his NOAA knowledge with you here today. Scott Cornwell has been a solutions engineer for NOAA for over three years and has worked closely to create value with many of NOAA's most important customers. And now before we get started for some housekeeping, you'll be on mute during the webinar. If you would like to ask a question, please send it to us in the chat window on your right-hand side of the WebEx screen. We'll get through as many questions as time permits, but all of your questions are important to us, so please send them on. We are recording today's webinar, and we will forward you a copy of the recording as soon as it's complete. Thank you again for joining us today, and now I'm going to turn it over to Sarah White. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you, Sue, for having me on today to talk to you a little bit about the partnership between SAP and NOAA. So, uh, for those of you on the phone that aren't aware of the SAP and NOAA partnership, I wanted to just give you a, a little bit of background and say a few words on it. Um, so first and foremost, we officially established our partnership with NOAA in 2008. Um, you might be aware that SAP has many, many different partners and many different kinds of partners. I do want to draw out the kind of partner that NOAA is uh, to SAP, just to give you a little bit of context of this um, of this discussion and for this webinar, so you get a feel for the the type of software that we'll be talking about today, which is SAP User Experience Management uh, by NOAA. Um, so, as I mentioned, SAP has a, a lot of different types of partner programs um, at SAP um, from partners be having their solutions certified um, to, um, you know, an EcoHub referral all the way up to what we call a solution extension partnership. Now, our solution extension partners are very special to us, and we don't really have that many. I think there's a list of maybe less than 25 partners. Um, these are specific organizations that SAP has chosen to have a joint product strategy and solution roadmap. Um, SAP User Experience Management by NOAA is tested to our product standards. Um, we sell it um, on SAP paper via an SAP licensing model. When you procure um, SAP User Experience Management by NOAA from SAP, you are um, covered under the same maintenance, upgrade, and support um, agreement that you have um, with SAP. And then in addition, we do, um, we do strive with our solution extension partners to ensure that their software meets and exceeds a long-term return on investment for our customers. So we do have um, a ton of customers. Um, that um, are users of SAP User Experience Management um, in some way, shape, or form or another. But I did just want to give you a feel for um, just the, the type of relationship that SAP has with NOAA and the high-quality software that SAP User Experience Management by NOAA really is. So with that being said, I would like to pass the baton and the presentation over to Sohail. He's going to talk to us a little bit about how SAP User Experience Management by NOAA has helped Tech Data um, accomplish some of their key um, objectives and initiatives for their organization. So with that being said, Sohail, do you want to take it away? Thank you very much, Sarah. Um, 
Good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you for uh, giving me the time this morning or this afternoon to go through how Tech Data really implemented the NOAA software and some of the benefits that we've reaped from doing so. Um, I'll start off uh, briefly by giving everyone an introduction about Tech Data. We are one of the world's largest IT distributors. Uh, we've been in the business for just over 38 years, um, 26.5 billion in revenue uh, for the fiscal year 2011. Uh, we're 109 on the Fortune 500. We have thousands of resellers that really rely on us day to day to get the products to them so they can dis distribute them out to the market. Uh, our high level architectural landscape, as you can see, we're definitely an SAP shop. We have all of the big name uh, modules in place, the WM, SD, MM. Uh, we also have a layer of systems supporting our SAP platform and a number of e-business systems that we have uh, to support our business across the board. Uh, a few years ago, uh, we – actually, I'll go back to this slide for the time being. Uh, a few years ago, we went through a very large-scale project to get uh, some additional modules from SAP implemented, mainly being the SCM, our MM, and our SD modules. Uh, it was a project where we wanted to have all of our – all of our transactions, all of our business going through SAP. Um, we went through this project, we went live just over two years ago, and after the after go live, we came up with a challenge of users having complaints and issues about the system being slow. Uh, very specifically, our sales team were saying that they were trying to create sales orders, and while they were in the VA01 transaction, the system was slow. Um, we would, in turn, as you would being an IT shop, you would go to your basis team, you would go to the network team, you would say, tell me what the problem is. We would go to the different monitoring tools we have and we would see that the system had capacity, there was no network latency issues, um, and we really could not see what the user was experiencing right in front of them. Uh, all the different information that we would get from the different users, they would call it to the help desk and they would say very vague statements like, the system is slow. Um, which, as you can imagine, would make it very difficult for anyone who is trying to troubleshoot an issue just with a vague statement saying the system is slow. Um, our main objective when we were out looking for tools and out looking for ways that we could get the visibility into what the user was experiencing and really be able to have a method that we could troubleshoot when we got these types of tickets, that was our main objective, was to find a way that we could really encompass and gather all that information and then begin our troubleshooting and begin, begin, our, um, begin our actions on how we were going to uh, fix those issues. Uh, what we did was our VP of IT at the time, Dan Lasser, uh, he went out into the market and he evaluated a number of different tools, um, anywhere from um, automation tools that can recreate, uh, recreate transactions in the system to different monitoring tools that would look at different aspects of the different layers within SAP. And we finally uh, landed on NOAA uh, based on recommendations from both SAP and other users in the marketplace. And NOAA came in, gave us a demo of what the tool could do, and uh, we pretty much decided that we were going to implement NOAA across 600 users or 600 licenses within our organization, mainly focusing on the sales team because that's where a lot of the system performance issues were stemming from. Uh, during the implementation, um, NOAA was extremely helpful once we got the software in-house. Uh, we are, since this was such a hot topic for all of the IT team here locally in Clearwater, we, um, we pretty much had the landscape ready and waiting for us. We set up a couple of virtual servers. We had the team standing by that as soon as we got the software, they were ready to go. Uh, NOAA was online. We had numerous WebExes set up, just as we're doing today, set up where NOAA walked us through the installation process, made sure that we had all the agents deployed successfully, and made sure that they were communicating back to the, back to the controllers and back to the uh, databases that we were storing all the information in. Uh, we initially deployed 550 just to get a broad uh, spread of information from different users. And we kept 50 agents kind of in our back pocket just in case we needed to deploy these to any users that were having um, the similar uh, performance uh, complaints. Uh, just the third point here, we pushed out the agents via the SSCM um, functionality, pushed that all to, uh, to all the different users. And really right off the bat, as soon as we deployed the agents, uh, we configured the software, we went in there and made the necessary configurations on the NOAA console. 
in regards to the different users we're trying to capture, the different screens we were looking at, the different business process that we really tried to, to capture. And within a week, as you can imagine, as the data starts flowing in, you start seeing better and better average response times. You start seeing, I'm sorry, averages, I mean, as, as far as gathering data-wise. Uh, day one, you won't be able to average anything again because you don't have any previous data. So after the first couple of weeks, once the data starts really flowing in, you can start seeing some of the trending. You can see how the response times are uh, matching up to baselines that you pre-configure. Um, as an example here, we, we were comparing a baseline, and these screenshots are from an older version of NOAA. Um, but we were comparing the baselines to data that was collected a couple of weeks prior. And as you can see, we were getting information from the different screens that we were looking at uh, in regards to how many active users we had, whether it was a change, the different response times. But I'm not going to go too much into the details only because I know Scott has a presentation on, and he's going to give a live demo of some of these different tools. But as you can see, we were able to get this information, and it was truly from what the user was experiencing. While the user was sitting at their desk looking at their screen, this is what they're experiencing. So even though our basis team was telling us we have capacity and there's the average response time of this step is 0 0.01 seconds, we can actually see from a user's perspective that their response time that they were getting was slightly larger than that. This really allowed us to start digging into the code, start digging into the processes that we had in place within SAP to say, okay, it's not a system issue. Is it a process, whether it's how the user is performing their daily task? Is it the way the different checks are being done within the system? Um, whatever it may be, it allowed us to really dig into that detail. And I'll kind of go back to this. So this really achieved our business challenge from the, the moment we switched it on. We were able to get that visibility solve those type of issues. And this is what really what we were looking for. Um, what we kind of, as what we were not expecting was some of the discovered opportunities that we were aware of that NOAA provided these, but we weren't really focused on those. However, once we got the tool up and running, we found uh, quite a few different things that we actually use the tool for today. One of those being security uh, and regulatory compliance. Um, Within SAP, if you try to get into a transaction, you get different messages. You get different user authorization messages. Um, you're not allowed to use this transaction. This transaction was denied for a reason X, Y, Z. Um, so we really have this visibility now that every time users get this message, we can have a count on these. So as you can see, for this time period, we had 13 where users were getting authorization messages. Um, we can see if users are able to get into specific transactions. As you can imagine, within SAP, there are transactions that are for IT only, that are development transactions or configuration transactions. You don't really want the average user logging into these transactions because God knows what they could get up to. Um, so we've put uh, alerts on this so we can, and we make configurations so that these type of messages come up. So if a user is trying to get into a transaction that they're not supposed to, we actually have visibility to this now. Another one that we definitely use the, the system for today is incident management. So anytime we see degradation in performance or if we see a large number of system error messages within a certain period of time, we've set up alerts within the tool so that both myself and our run, uh, run team, our SAP run services team, and also our help desk gets notifications when um, say it takes more than a defined period of time to run a, ser a specific report or run through a specific set of screens. Um, similarly, if there are a number of system errors within a certain period of time, uh, we know that something is failing and we get notifications so that we can proactively go out and address that in attempts to do that before the user really starts to experience any issues on their side. In a similar fashion, we're looking at while we have different users going through the different transactions on a daily basis, we often get calls with users that run into issues that, that don't understand why something is going wrong. And we can go back and we can look into their workflows. We can see every transaction the user went into. We can see the screen, their activities, uh, what kind of um, operations they were doing, whether they were saving, getting continue, recalculating costs. As you can imagine, within a within a different transaction, all the different things you can do. And this information we're really handing off to our sales trading team, who's taking this and looking through different workflows. 
from there, they can see whether users are taking 10 steps when we know that the optimal step is going to one transaction, and they can complete that operation within one step, as an example. Uh, we use this, um, the, sales using, the sales team, sales training team, I should say, uses this to really see where they can improve users' activities and users' uh, processes on a daily basis. Similarly, when we have new hires come on, they have to go through a set of training and we aren't doing it yet, but our goal is to have the new hires actually sit down and run through creating sales orders or creating whatever transaction they need to do. And we'll be using this workflow in the background so that after the fact, we can go back through and ensure that the users that we've just trained on are following the steps that we just taught them pretty much. And that's not something we're doing today, but definitely our long-term aspiration. Um, we have a number of things that IT builds that we push out, different projects come in, different optimizations that we push out. We, um, we use the tool to make sure that people are actually using this. Uh, if we find that users aren't really, really adopting the tool or they're not using it as much, maybe it's a, a different topic that we have to look into. We have to see if our change management process wasn't working or if our notifications to the users didn't really go out. So this allows us to say whether people are underutilizing under functionality, or if they're actually misusing functionality. Uh, within SAP, there are always certain ways that you can do things. There are multiple shortcuts, and more often than not, some of these shortcuts might be detrimental to other parts of the business or other processes that users might be trying to do. Uh, one of them in this example uh, was a, an operation within our SEM uh, system called Control F4 which actually runs through an availability check. And if this is done by users, it actually can steal stock from other orders. Uh, we had high priority orders that were losing stock and we couldn't really figure out why. Um, until one day we realized that users were using this operation, uh, which was taking stock from high priority orders, and we figured out, okay, this is a no-no, we have to stop this. So now we have this as an alert where if we see users performing this operation, without a valid reason, it gives us kind of some, a way that we can go back and take actions to correct that. Uh, again, underutilization of the functionality. Um, if users aren't using any specific operation that we would like them to, a quote upload a tool that we have here, Tech Data as an example, if they aren't using that, we can really, uh, we can use NOAA to see how many people are using it, how many people aren't using it and really some of the active time and the response times, as you can imagine, with the different tools. Uh, one of the things that, that I really enjoy using is using you know, the, the workflow tool as a test script and to ensure that users have gone through a test script completely. As, um, as we go through our different testing cycles, uh, whenever we have a project, we have formal test scripts where step one, log into the system, step two, place an order for X, Y, Z, uh, NOAA allows us to have this as a printout side by side so that we can actually check off that the user ran through each one of the screens. And this really gives us even more um, testing evidence that we have to provide for all of our different systems. Um, and really allows us to kind of close the loop to make sure that the users have actually tested the different uh, pieces that we're putting into production. Uh, so those were some of the things that we found that were in addition to what our base objective was for bringing NOAA on board. We wanted to be able to track user performance, make sure that we could identify where the degradations in performance were. And we've also built a number of tools on top of NOAA to be able to track um, specific metrics on how long it takes a, a user to create a sales order, as an example. We strung together different screens within NOAA, uh, NOAA tied together different business processes, and we actually merged some of our own data together with NOAA's, NOAA's data to build some um, some specific reports for us. So we've definitely, it's definitely a robust tool that we, we definitely like here at Tech Data and that we've built on top of. Our future direction, we're definitely looking to expand um, the usage. Um, today, we only have the 600 licenses mainly focused on our sales area. Uh, there's definitely benefits for us to move and expand that usage to our logistics users, our finance users, and all the different other areas within tech data. So that's what we're looking to do in the future. Um, and as uh, the third bullet point says here, that we're working with NOAA really on 
uh, building new reports. So there's constantly a new report that we're looking into, constantly a new piece of data or some metrics that we would like to like to capture, merge with our own data, and really build some new reports in the future. So NOAA has been a great partner in helping us build these reports, helping us troubleshoot, and really helping us take us to the next level. And really, that's uh, my presentation for today. Uh, again, thank you to the NOAA team for letting me present this. Uh, thanks, everyone, for listening today. I will pass now control over to Scott, and I think Scott's going to go through a live demo. Thanks, Sohail. So I'm going to go ahead and assume that everyone can see my um, um, desktop. Um, I just shared it. And from a high level, I guess, let me start with some basic points so you can get an idea of, of what we're looking at. And then I'll move into how our customers use NOAA to solve, you know, particular problems in their environment, like monitor user performance issues, understand errors um, in their environment, and, uh, and other things like that. I know we have a short time today, so if anyone would like a further demo after that, that, that can definitely be arranged. And, you know, what we're looking at here is business objects with NOAA running inside of it. In other words, NOAA powered by uh, uh, business objects. Um, and what we're looking at here is, is many different dashboards. Um, currently, there's seven different dashboards, and I'll eventually get into a few of these, and the, the list is constantly growing. But the key point I want you to take away from all this is all these, these areas that you see, all these interfaces and dashboards and reports, they're all customizable. And you can add to this list um, with any of your own customized solution sets as you feel the need. We also have many standard reports already developed in the server. So immediately when NOAA is set up and you push out those agents to the desktop, we can begin reporting on, on data. And again, we have the ability for you to build your own custom reports to develop stuff that's specific to your own environment. As Sohil mentioned, we also have an alerting feature that lets you um, um, create thresholds on particular um, um, things in your environment, such as response time or if you want to be alerted if particular messages are, are, are showing up. Um, this lets you be, you know, proactive instead of reactive by responding to problems as they're happening instead of waiting until you get this influx of calls um, into your, your support environment. One of the most unique features by far is this concept of the workflow. And so Phil touched on this a little bit in, in his call, and I actually pulled this up. Let's say you have a user, you know, um, Hitchcock here is complaining, you know, and having a particular problem um, during the day. How do you verify that now? Um, with any solution you have in your environment. It, it's almost impossible. But I can quickly pull up a workflow for Hitchcock and see what he did step by step throughout that day. I can go back, if he had that same problem, you know, previous days or, or last week, I can quickly pull up all that information and actually see and compare this. I see that, that Hitchcock um, had multiple windows open through the session um, ID right here. He was switching between UAT and production. And I see step by step, module by module, screen by screen, you know, what he did as he worked through a business process. I see how long each individual operation took and how long he was on each individual screen. You can imagine how powerful this is, you know, having this information. What we see with most of our customers is that when a user has a problem, they immediately export this into Excel or a CSV format attach this to their support tickets so that as it moves up that chain, you know, level one through three, they have all this, this information in front of them. They don't have to go back and constantly interrogate the user or, or sit in a lab and, tr and try to reproduce a problem. So in addition to all these, these tool sets, the dashboards, reports, alerts, and, and workflow, you know, we also have custom so solution sets that combine, you know, all the dashboards, the reports, everything you need in front of you. So whether you're in business process operations or technical operations or training or, or user support, you know, we have all the information here that you need so you don't have to go looking for it. So very quickly, I want to go over why you know it's unique and all the different metrics we're, we're gathering. Again, we're an agent-based technology. We're a very passive agent. Um, you, you push this agent out to each uh, user in, in your environment. We're, uh, we use less than 1% CPU when a user is active within SAP, and it's very lightweight. We use about 8 megabytes of RAM. Um, the first thing I want to point out is we're monitoring all of your SAP applications out of the box. 
And again, because we're an agent-based technology, whether you're in production, um, CRM, uh, portal, NetWeaver business client, um, UAT environment, we're monitoring all of that from one agent. The second component I want to point out is this concept of, of active time. And what do we mean by active time? You know, a user may come in, they may launch SAP, they may, you know, get up and go get coffee, go to a meeting. They may never use SAP the rest of the day. You have no way of determining that from logs. But with NOAA, we're actually tracking the true active time. We know when the user is has SAP in focus or when they're idle, when they're not the machine. But it's important to note that we're not Big Brother. You know, we're not monitoring when a user is, is, is in other applications other than SAP. Um, using this component, actually, we just did a call with Forrester, and they mentioned that um, using this, we can give you the truest form of adoption. If, if I have time, I'll actually show you this in other dashboards later. You can actually, you know, using this active time component, you can compare, you know, all of your users should be using um, SAP the same way in a particular group. But, you know, if their average time deviates from that, if they're not following a specific workflow, their active time will, will show up um, in a graph. The second co key component, which is important when we talk about tech data and, and their use case, is this concept of, of response time. And what do we mean by response time here? Um, with NOAA, compared to APM solutions that are monitoring from the server out, they're monitoring your CPU time, your network bandwidth, your um, disk space, your database usage, things like that, NOAA is monitoring the true round-trip response time, you know, what the user's actually seeing. So when I click on this module tab, you know, it goes out to the server, has to query the database five or six times, you know, all that information has to be rendered, sent back to me and rendered again on my desktop What's the end user really seeing? And that's what we're seeing here. That's what we're talking about when we mean, uh, when we talk about response time. It's, it's how long it takes that screen to actually be rendered on um, the user's desktop. And we'll get into more of that in, in the next dashboard that I go to. The last thing I want to point out is we're capturing all messages that a user sees. And we're categorizing these into either informational messages, user errors, or system errors. You know, not, we're not parsing back end logs. We're actually capturing the actual messages that user sees. And the final point that I want to take um, um, point out about this is, you know, we're looking at all this information from a high level. I'm looking across my entire, you know, SAP landscape. But we allow you to also import, you know, automatically um, from LDAP or your HR system different attributes from your own system, whatever is important to you, whether it's city, you know, state, business unit, department. Um, um, super user type, you know, service time, manager, training type. Anything you find important in your own environment can be automatically imported. So I can quickly run a, a, a filter on any of these dashboards, any of the reports you see, and really get a, you know, a view of the information that's just specific to me. So if I'm a manager or uh, uh, if I want to look at a specific user group, I can easily do that within, within that. So very quickly, I want to go over the um, to the response time um, profile. And again, response time, as I mentioned before, is 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 the true round trip. You know, I just clicked on a link here, and all this information is being rendered on the server. Um, and using this, we can actually spot deviations or problem areas in our environment. You know, if if I want to investigate issues in my environment, let's let's see. I could quickly go here. And um, let's select, I'm going to organize this by users. And I can quickly look down the list here and see, um, you know, particular response times. I'll pick this one, you know, 33 seconds. I notice 29 users are using this and 1,334 um, times. I mean, this is a massive amount of time that users are spending on this particular Z code. So why don't we go and investigate this decoder? Maybe we could do some, you know, back-end database performance improvements, um, um, issues like that. You know, this could save a massive amount of time. And, and what we're looking at here is a small subset of data of, you know, we have only a couple hundred users, maybe 500 users in this data set. But, you know, you can imagine across your own environment where you may have thousands of users, how much time you can bring back to these users. Because this is the amount of time people are waiting you know, as they work through this, their, their daily operations. And they may be spending 30 or minutes to an hour. You know, many times when we install NOAA on, on users, 
desktop suddenly they didn't they didn't realize they had all these problems. You know that they may think that they may have a database that's running at 80 percent or a, a server that's running at the 80 percent CPU, and they think all of this is okay. But when it's all added up, the end user is is the one that's really suffering, and and they they really see this with Noah with all these problems. We can also view all this information down to an operational level. Um, and I can get an idea of, of individual operations that are happening in a, in a particular screen. And I can do the same thing I did on the other screen and select this by operations. And I see a lot of these are, are, are pretty bad, you know, um, 132 seconds, 155 seconds. I can quickly click on this and actually get an idea of who is affected by this particular problem. You know, maybe it's only a couple of users that are experiencing this, or maybe it's all of my users. We've actually done a few rollouts where we put this out to customers, and, and because we're monitoring things like his browser information and, and uh, Windows information, you know, the version of Windows, we noticed that, that the customer was able to determine that the problem in performance was because users did not upgrade their browser to the, the proper version, and it was a quick fix doing that. So the next steps forward I want to point out is um, errors profile, and I like to call this our training or user sustainment um, dashboard. And what we see with many companies is they have this spray and pray mentality when it comes to training and understanding the problems in their environment. You know, they may grab users four times a year, throw them in training. They have no idea who to train. They have no idea what to train on. They have no idea how effective that training is after they do a training session. Here I can quickly see the, the 20 problem areas in all the individual modules um, that, were, that are in my environment. I mean, these are the top 20 areas where, where most users are experiencing, you know, the most problems. If I am concerned about, let's say, the, the sales business process, let me pick VA02. I see a lot of people are struggling here. I can quickly select this, and I, I see a breakdown here on the right by city of where users are experiencing the most problems. So maybe St. Clair here, I need to focus more training there. Um, if I, you know, I can quickly select St. Clair here, and I can see a breakdown of the individual users that may need more training. You know, instead of grabbing all of my users, Maybe let me create a training class of the struggling users. Or I can view all this information by other things, such as, you know, like department. You know, where are my struggling departments? I see it's, you know, supply chain, customer services. Maybe we need to rework, you know, maybe it's not our users. Maybe we just need to rework how users have worked through the business process. Maybe it's confusing for everybody. Um, the next thing I want to point out is, that we're, we can also view all the individual, you know, the top messages, um, error messages that a user is getting. And what this dashboard does is it creates a bridge between business and IT, you know, for ongoing dialogue, ongoing review, you know, um, to go over the particular problems that are happening in, 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 in one's environment. And, you know, one of our customers, Johns Mansfield, is a great example of it. They actually took this and they compared all the individual problems that were happening in their environment. They compared this to Solution Manager, and they said, you know, why do these problems even need to happen? You know, let's just, let's, let's focus, let's create an initiative and just get rid of these problems, stop these problems happening altogether. And they were very successful at that. You know, they took all these problems, they analyzed why they're happening, you know, and they created things like self-help portals, they reworked some of their, you know, custom applications, things like that, and they reduced their ticket count by over 50% just by doing this. And the last thing I want to point out on this dashboard is this concept of message grouping. You know, not only can we view your top 20, um, you know, problems in modules or, you know, T-codes, Z-codes, or high-level tabs, and, you know, not only can we view all the messages, but we can also group all these messages in message, message groups automatically. And this is customizable to your own environment. Um, you know, we can view groups of messages such as authorization issues, master data issues, training issues, material issues, any of these issues can be viewed from a, from a higher level, so you can really get an idea of, of what's going on in your environment. And again, we can select any of this and see who are affected by this. You know, maybe we just did a change event and all of my users in a particular area are now locked out and they're getting authorization issues. This is going to show you that very quickly.
I think it's the next dashboard I want to go over, and, and so he'll show a little about this, is the business process dashboard. And not only can we group information, you know, by custom attributes, user groups, and things like that, but we automatically categorize all your T codes and Z codes into business processes. And this is also customizable. You can create custom business processes as, as you need. But this dashboard is a baselining dashboard. And we're looking at a, a current two-week period based on a previous baseline period. And this can be, you know, we can look at the current two weeks based on previous two weeks or the current month based on a previous month or even, you know, the current year based on a previous year if we have that amount of data. But this dashboard becomes very important when we're trying to understand change events. You know, maybe we just did a change in our sales order, the way that people work through a change order. You know, I'm very, I, I can see based on the activity trend are users still adopting that? Did this change? Do we suddenly have a, a reduction in user participation? Or did we do a rollout um, or change on the back end? Maybe we did a server change. I can quickly see here, based on the previous two weeks, you know, the response time. How, how are those users affected based on a change? Or we may have a, a great influx of, of system errors, which are indicative of, of server-side errors. These are like ASAP errors, stack traces, things like that. These are back-end server processes that are that are going bad. And then we have an influx of, of user errors. And these will show you um, when users are having training issues. You know, if we do a change in our environment, we can quickly see that, that users are experiencing a lot of problems. Not only that, I can use this dashboard again to see changes in response times in graph form down here at the bottom. But I can also switch this. Let's say we have a, uh, a training event. You know, how are my users affected after a training? How effective is my training? You know, are the users getting less errors or are they getting more errors? Do they need more training after that? So you can see how powerful the dashboard becomes in many different aspects of your environment. So the next dashboard, as we have time, I know we're running short on time, is, is I just want to point out the business process profile. This has let us dig deeper into a specific business process. And here I'm seeing by the color, um, the darker the color, this is the more active users. And the size of this is the active time. So I know most of my users are spending a lot of time in VA01, but the most users here are in VA03. But this gives me an idea of impact of, of really what's going on, you know, who's using this environment. And this can also be used if you're, you're planning on upgrading or, or rolling out Fiori or business personas or or, or things like that, to get an idea of where we need to focus our attention. Um, we can change this quickly and see where response time problems are happening in environment, my environment. And again, I know that the, the EMIRO um, uh, business, pro, uh, excuse me, transaction here, let's focus our attention there um, um, instead of the other areas. Or if we're worried about, you know, where should we focus our, our areas in, in training, I can select these various areas and see where users are experiencing those, those problems. I see these are the individual users that, that may need focus or, or extra attention, and these are the particular problems they're getting. So with that, I guess, um, since we're, we're running short on time, I guess I'll open the, um, the floor for any particular questions that people have. And if there's any, you know, this is a short amount of time, if there's another demo that we'd like to set up privately, that can definitely be arranged. Excellent. So we do have a couple questions for you. Um, I believe that this um, this might be for both you and for Sohail. Um, the I guess the first part of the question is, can you describe the NOAA implementation process? And the second portion of the question is, how many internal resources did you need? How long did it take? So. Scott, perhaps it might be good for you to describe the NOAA implementation process, and then so Hale, if you could chime in and ask, or excuse me, and um, and uh, give a little bit of color around the internal resources that you guys needed and the amount of time it took you, I think that would be helpful. Sure. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll let it. So he'll expand his his personal experience. May have been a little different, but typically what we see on average is our implementation process takes about six weeks. You know, normally we have a few calls um, to get ramped up so we can introduce, we assign you a, a, a personal project manager um, that will take care of all your needs. 
Um, and basically, really, all you need to do is have all the, the hardware set up on your side. Again, NOAA sits outside of SAP. We do, we do not integrate in the back-end SAP landscape, so there's no – you don't have to be worried about NOAA bringing down your system at any time. Um, once everything is, is pretty much aligned and you have all the hardware ready, either in a virtual environment or whatever, we typically take about three servers – um, that, that NOAA will use, we can begin the implementation process. And usually we do this remotely. You can open up a, a secure VPN or another process for us to connect to. Uh, we'll install all the software for you. If you don't have business objects, we'll also install them for you. Um, um, and then after that, it's really um, value realization and, and training. And this all typically takes about, about six weeks. So, Hal, I don't know if you want to add any, anything to that. Uh, uh, I think the only thing I missed is – go ahead. Uh, sorry, Scott. Um, yeah, I definitely wanted to add, and also there was a question from uh, from Bruno on the, the chat that I wanted to address as well. Um, we had – as I mentioned, once we went live, we had a lot of issues, and we had a lot of users complaining, so it was a very hot topic. Um, so I was really under a mandate from both our VPs and, and our CIO to get this installed really quick. So luckily, we had the resources where they could they stood up a virtual server. They, they stood up the virtual servers, got the database, got the infrastructure set up within a couple of days. So from the time we really purchased the software, we had it up within I think just under two weeks, and we started collecting a lot of data. So I think it's really dependent on the organization and on um, the resources that you have to implement the the tool. I know Noah says it takes six weeks, but I think if you're you have motivation, you have the resources in place, it can be a lot quicker. Um, the second question that I want to address was from Bruno. She um, um, sorry, uh, asked if, how did you implement the support model of NOAA into your organization? And if, uh, if we had a central support team, or to, did we spread the tools usage as one does with baseline office tools? So the support model, it's really, we don't have a large support team for NOAA within the organization. It's really me and the run service team that use it. And to be honest, there's not a lot of support that the tool needs. There was a few weeks where we went in and we recategorized which messages were system errors versus user errors versus just non-messages that we didn't need to pay attention to. And there was some configuration around the different locations that we wanted to track, the different screens we wanted to track. That type of configuration took a couple of weeks, but the support model going forward is is there's not a lot of support needed for the tool. Um, and I think that was the question. And um, sorry, they just asked me. Uh, Scott, if you could pass, um, I'm sharing again. Actually, I, I just did. You should have it. Yeah, we actually have uh, one more question, I believe, right now. Um, so um, please, if um, if you do have any questions and you are in the um, chat or if you are, um, you know, in the Q&A space, uh, please feel free to ask your questions now. Um, the next um, the next question, so Hale, where it might be uh, for you to answer is, how um, what type of load does NOAA place on your network? So what um. Can you talk a little bit about about the amount of data and the um, sort of the stress on on your network? Uh, definitely, there, it's it's minimal. Uh, that was definitely a concern of our network team, and also our security team of what kind of uh, load that would put on the network. So when we initially set up the the agents, we deployed uh, probably 20 agents, and we we took a look at the the network um, topography, looked at the different. Uh, we have a number of different tools that track uh, different response times and stuff such on our network. And really, as Scott mentioned, the tool and the agents, the agents on the user's desktops and the amount of information it flows back is really minimal. It has such a small footprint on the user's desktop and the information it sends back to the, um, uh, I'm not sure the exact name of it, the controlling database or the um, the server that collects all the information uh, we really haven't seen um, any, even even a, a minuscule blip on the network traffic with the tool. Excellent, that's good to know. So, 
Um, at this point in time, does anyone have any other questions? Please feel free to type them in the chat. Um, it does not appear that we do. Um, I do want to let you know, though, um, I, I guess I will close the, um, the webinar or Sue, um, Devin, please feel free to jump in. Uh, but I do want to let you know that you will be receiving a follow-up email. Thank you for attending today. Um, in the follow-up email, we will provide you the presentation um, that we used today as well as a recording of our webinar. So if you do have questions uh, between uh, now and then that you are really would love to be answered, um, please feel free to reach out to us or, uh, or, or tweet us, if you will, um, to, to ask your questions and someone will reach out back to you um, to answer them. So thank you again for joining today. Uh, we really appreciate your time and your attention to this topic. Um, thank you, Sohail, for presenting and, and sharing TechData's experience with SAP User Experience Management by NOAA. And, um, and thank you, Scott, for giving us a great uh, demonstration of the software. So with that, I hope everyone has a lovely um, afternoon and, uh, and a fantastic day.